Emily Lawson, and today I'm going to talk to you about the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem states that when a force does work on a system, the work done changes the energy of the system. In other words, if the external force does positive work on a system, the system's total energy increases. But if the system does work, the system's total energy will decrease. The type of energy that is affected depends on the nature of the work being done. If the work results in a change of motion of the object, then this will impact the kinetic energy of the object. Whereas if the work done changes the height of the object, the gravitational potential energy will be affected. In much the same way, if the work done is in compressing or stretching a spring, the elastic potential energy of the system will be affected. And if the work is done against friction, this will have an effect on the internal energy of the system. My first example problem today is a chef pushing a 10 kilogram pasty cart from rest a distance of five meters with a constant horizontal force of 10 newtons. We can assume a frictionless surface and we want to determine the cart's change in kinetic energy and its final velocity. So first off, I will write down everything that I know. So we have a mass of 10 kilograms and a distance or displacement call R of five meters for the cart. And the force acting on the cart is a constant 10 newtons. To find my change in energy, I know that the work done is going to be equal to my change in kinetic energy of the cart from the work energy theorem. And I also know that my work done is equal to force times the displacement of the cart. So I can plug in the numbers and I'll get that work done is equal to 10 newtons times my displacement of 5 meters, which is just equal to 50 joules. Using this change in kinetic energy of 50 joules, I can find the final velocity because I know that my cart is starting from rest. So here, I'll use my formula for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. And I can just solve for v to get the formula of v equals the square root of 2 times my kinetic energy divided by my mass. Plugging in everything I know, I'll get that my velocity is just equal to 2 times 50 joules from the first part divided by my mass of 10 kilograms. And if I put this into my calculator, I will get a velocity of 3.2 meters per second. My second example problem has to do with a pitcher who throws a 143 gram baseball toward a catcher at an initial velocity of 45 meters per second. And if the catcher's hand moves back a distance of six centimeters in stopping the ball, I want to determine the average force exerted on the catcher's hand. So again, I'll start by writing down everything that I know. My mass of the ball is 143 grams or 0.143 kilograms. The initial velocity of the ball is 45 meters per second and the displacement 
of the catcher's hand is 6 centimeters or 0 0.06 meters. Again, I'm going to use the work energy theorem of work equals the change in kinetic energy and then expand this out a little bit because I know that work is equal to my force times my displacement and I know that the change in my kinetic energy of the ball from its initial velocity to rest is going to be equal to one half mass times that initial velocity squared. To solve for my force, I'll just rearrange my equation to get force is equal to mass times initial velocity squared divided by 2 times r. If I plug in my values, I'll get 0.143 kilograms times my initial velocity of 45 meters per second squared divided by 2 times my displacement of 0 0.06 meters. And if I plug this in to my calculator, I'll get an answer of 2,413 newtons. My final example involves a force versus displacement graph for a net force applied horizontally to an object of mass m initially at rest on a frictionless surface. We want to determine the object's final speed in terms of f max, r1, r2, r3, and m, which are given in the diagram. And we can assume that the force does not change its direction at any point during this time. So I'm going to start by recognizing that the work done is equal to the area under my force versus displacement graph. And in this case, this will be the area of each section of my graph added together. So we have our first triangle, 1 half base times height, plus my rectangle, area of the length times the width, plus the area of my second triangle, again, 1 half base times height. And I will also utilize the work energy theorem here to realize that that work done is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy of the object, which is equal to 1 half mv squared, because our object is starting at rest. Plugging in my values for the area, I'll get 1 half times r1 times f max for my first triangle plus the length of the rectangle r2 minus r1 times the height, which is f max again plus, for my second triangle, 1 half times the base of R3 minus R2 times F max, and that is just going to be equal to 1 half mv squared. Rearranging my formula, I'm just going to multiply by 2 over m on both sides and factor out my F max to make this a little simpler. I'll get that v squared is equal to f max over m times r1 plus 2r2 minus 2r1 plus r3 minus r2. And if I simplify that, a little further, I'll get that v squared is equal to f max over m times
times negative r1 plus r2 plus r3 so that the final speed of the object is just equal to the square root of f max over m times minus r1 plus r2 plus r3. For more information on the work energy theorem, you can visit aplusphysics.com. Thank you and have a great day.